Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to the channel and I hope you're doing well in these trying times. Our topic today is work, energy and power. So without further delay, let's dive right into it. What is work? Work is simply the transfer of energy. So what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. These are pretty simple definitions you can find almost anywhere. And to be honest, they don't really say much about each other. So let's go for a simple analogy that helps us understand. You can think of energy as money. Money that you have either in cash or in store in bank. And work as a transfer of money. To make a transfer, from cash to bank, you need to have money. In the same way, to work, you need to have energy. And whenever you make a money transfer, you convert money from one form to another, from cash to store. So the money transfer or work transforms energy from one form to another. It can be kinetic energy to potential energy, nuclear energy to thermal energy, Work will always convert energy from one form into another. So we say work has been done in physics when an external force converts energy from one form to another. So a simple definition of work is work equals to force times displacement. Mind you that the force we're working with will always be constant. And the unit for work is joules or in its base forms it's kilojoule meter square per second if we break it down into its dimensions work comes directly from here force becomes mass times acceleration which can then be broken down into distance divided by time squared these distances will multiply and we get mass times distance squared divided by time squared which is how we get the unit kilogram per kilogram meter square per second. So let's look. So imagine a person moving a rock by applying a constant force of a thousand newtons. He manages to displace the rock by 20 meters, and so he's effectively done a work of a thousand times 20 equals to 20,000 joules. On the other hand, imagine a person who is trying to stop a moving rock. He would apply the same 1000 Newton force, but by the time he stopped the rock, the rock would have moved 20 meters. However, the displacement now is against the line of force, the opposite in direction. So the work done by the person is now W equals to 1000 times minus 20 equals to minus 20,000. And now if you're wondering what does the minus sign mean and how it differs from the plus 20,000, then the answer is actually pretty simple. The positive 20,000 joules denotes positive work. And in physics, positive work is done when the displacement is in line with the force or some of its component. We say that the force has done work on the rock. On the other hand, the minus 20,000 represents negative work. And in physics, negative work is done when the displacement happens against the line of force or some of its component. We say that the object or the rock has now done work on the person who's trying to move it or the force that was acting on it. And if you're wondering how does a rock do work on a person, then it's pretty simple to understand. If you know anything about Newton's third law, you'd know that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So when the person applies a force of a thousand newtons to stop the rock, the rock will apply the same force on the person. So the rock is effectively applying a force of a thousand newtons on the person as well. And the rock has managed to move the person 20 meters since the person will move with the rock when he's trying to stop it. So now the rock has actually done a work of a thousand into 20 equals to 20,000 joules. And for the rock, the work is actually positive because the displacement has happened in line with the force.
watts and vectors. So what do I mean when I say watts and vectors? We mean that now we'd be deriving this formula, W equals to Fs cos theta. But before we do that, we have to look up a little bit to our original formula, W equals to Fs, where both force and displacement are vectors. And in physics, positive work is done only in the direction in which the force and displacement are parallel. That means, imagine you're lifting a box or you're moving a box on horizontal ground. If you pull the box at an angle to the horizontal, the box still moves horizontally, but your force is no longer horizontal. Your displacement and your force do not are not parallel anymore. So what you have to do is you either break down the force into its components or you break down the displacement into its components, one of which must be parallel to the other. So if we break down the force, then we get f sine theta and f cos theta. And if we have that, we can leave the displacement as it is. But if we keep the force as it is, instead of breaking it up, we now have to break the displacement. Again, by f cos theta and f sine theta. Of course, in this case, theta will be right here. And it doesn't matter how we go, we always end up with the formula work equals to force times distance times cos theta. This technique of breaking down a vector into its components is known as vector resolution. And if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. We'll be uploading a video about it pretty soon. And until then, it doesn't matter how you resolve the vector. You'll always end up with one vector being resolved with respect to the other. So we always have force times distance and multiplied by a cos theta. Now, if our force and displacement are actually parallel from the very beginning, then the angle between them is zero. This gives us W equal to F S cos zero. And that means F times S since cos zero is actually equal to one. So that's why the formula we begin with actually had displacement in the same direction as the force which is why we didn't have to think about cos theta. But just in case the force and the displacement are not parallel, we have to use the formula cos theta, taking into account the angle between them. So let's move on to a confusion I've had for a very long time, especially during my IGCSEs. Are work and energy interchangeable? which is asking, can you write energy instead of work in any place? The answer is actually no, not always. You can do it, but not in every situation. So what situation are we talking about? Let's go back to our analogy. Imagine you have a thousand dollars in cash. But having a thousand dollars in cash does not actually mean that you transfer all of the money that you have. You might transfer a hundred dollars instead of a thousand. So you have more money than you transferred, which means the energy you have is not equal to the work you're doing. But if you think about the transfer alone, you don't actually have to worry about how much money you have on either side. It doesn't matter how much cash you had, how much you had in the bank in storage. All that matters is you're taking a thousand hundred dollars worth of money and converting it from cash to store so you took some energy and you converted it into something else so that means your energy should actually be equal to the work you do and oddly enough they're both measured in joules so you should have seen this written in a lot of places work instead of energy now, how do these two get reconciled? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Instead of writing work equals to energy, all we have to do is write energy needed. 
Now, we can look at it a, a bit differently, that the work you do is actually the amount of energy you transferred, or the amount of energy you needed in order to make the transfer. So when I say energy needed, or when you say energy needed, you're not talking about the total amount of energy that you had. You're only talking about the energy you used to do the work. And that's how you can interchange work and energy, just by adding a word. And you can't always do it, of course not, just in specific places, when you're actually talking about work itself. I won't be talking about energy anymore, at least not in this video because I plan on releasing a separate one since energy is such a big chapter and we've got so much to cover about it. So let's move on to power. Power is the rate of energy transfer and as we've just seen energy transfer is nothing but work done which means power has a very simple formula power equals to work done divided by time. If we break it down into its dimensions, we get P equals to W by T, which then becomes Fs by T. F breaks down into MA, and MA then breaks down into MS divided by T squared. All of these multiply, and we get MS squared divided by T cubed. The unit of power is, of course, the watt. It's written as a capital W, and its base units translate to kg meter squared per second cube. Now, what does one watt mean? One watt power means we get one, we use up one joule of energy every second, or we convert one joule of energy every second into some other form. A hundred watt of power means we transfer a hundred joule of energy every second into another form. So the higher the power, the faster we can do work. Moving on to efficiency. Whenever we speak of power, we imagine a higher power means somebody who can do work faster or someone who can do work better. But faster and better are not the same thing. Better is where efficiency comes in. And the higher the efficiency, the better someone works. So let's look at what efficiency actually means. Efficiency comes a lot into play, especially when we're dealing with finances and economics of energy and power, because whenever there's a transfer of energy, there's almost always a waste of energy as well. And that's why the total amount of energy that we put in does not come out in the way we want. Let's think of light bulbs. We started with sodium lights and then we moved on to our tube lights and then we finally moved on to LED lights. So what was the difference? More efficiency. Sodium lights were actually very inefficient because a lot of energy that we put in was actually transferred into heat instead of light, which is why those bulbs used to get very hot, which means that the useful work that we want was a tiny fraction of the total energy that we gave in and so it wasn't a very efficient instrument which is why we moved on to LED, to um, tube lights and then finally to led lights just for the sake of a higher efficiency so useful work is actually total energy given minus the energy that is wasted into other forms I'll use the same example again. When we're talking about the sodium light, the total energy given is the electrical energy, all of it that goes into the bulb. The total and the energy that is wasted is the energy that is transferred into heat instead of light. The useful work done is, of course, the energy that comes out as light. Now, efficiency can also be calculated using power instead of work done. And this is more convenient because almost everything that we use today actually mentions power instead of work done. So it again goes the same way. Useful power divided by total power. Useful power is total power minus the wasted power. And if these formulas seem very similar to you, that's okay because they are actually the same thing. 
you just divide the top one by time. If you divide useful work done by time, you have useful power. If you divide total energy given by time, you have total power and so on. And that's how being faster does not always make you better. Sometimes you have to be efficient instead of being more powerful. If you enjoyed the video, let us know, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and of course ring the bell icon so you never miss a video. Thank you everyone.